We're back with another organic chemistry exam question from the 2021 paper two exam on the OCRA specification. It's a level of response, so our layout's gonna be really important along with a well-structured line of reasoning. Now for this particular question, it's a brilliant one. What we've got is isomerism being mentioned when we've got three different structures called D, E, and F, which are all isomers of the molecular formula C5H10O. One of them is allocyclic, and unlike a lot of the spectroscopy questions out there, we've actually not been given any uh, percentage composition by mass and mass spectrum information. Instead, we've got this amazing table of different qualitative functional group tests for organic chemistry. We then lean into a little bit of carbon-13 NMR spectroscopy for one of the compounds and some proton, so hydrogen NMR spectroscopy for the other two. So I'm going to take you through my full annotations and answer for this so then you know how I would lay this out in the exam. And don't forget for these spectroscopy questions for the OCR A specification, examiners are to the date of this video, told to actually check the spectrum for annotation. So if you are running for out of time in the exam for this one, and it was quite late in the paper, you can always annotate your spectrum using a lot of detail, of course, and it will be considered towards your answer. So let's start off by looking at this table of functional group information. What we can see here to start off, we've got 2,4-DNP. 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine is used to test for carbonyl compounds, which in your A-level is limited to aldehydes and ketones only. What this shows me is compound D isn't a carbonyl, so it isn't an aldehyde or a ketone, whereas E and F are, they're one or the other. We don't know which yet, but then this middle column is acidified dichromate 6, and it's under reflux. And this is a test for aldehydes and primary or secondary alcohols. The green solution here tells me that compound D must have been one of those three. And since we've already ruled out the idea that it's an aldehyde because it's got no carbonyl group, we can for certain confirm that compound D is a primary or secondary alcohol. E and F, well, we didn't expect to see them being primary or secondary alcohols, but we did identify that they were carbonyls. So what this does is it rules out E and F from being aldehydes and says they must be ketones. The bromine water test at the end here is for the C double bond C. None of these compounds give a color change. None of them decolorize the bromine water. And so what we've got here is none of these structures have a carbon-carbon double bond. But don't forget, we have been told they are all isomers of C5H10O, and one of them is allocyclic, which is incredibly likely to be the D at this stage, because the other two um, are going to have very similar structures since they are both ketones. So what I'm going to do now is have a quick look over the spectra data that I've been provided with here, but I'm going to do a more detailed analysis of the spectrum on the next page because I want to show you all the different uh, chemical shift values and how we clip all this together to give the structures. So first off, I've got compound D. Now compound D, we've only been given a little bit of information from its carbon-13 NMR spectrum here, and we can see that we've got three peaks, which means we've got three environments, and we've got the uh, parts per million scale, the delta chemical shift scale values for these here. And we can see one of them is off on its own, which is very likely to be that alcohol group. And then the other two are just in the regular region for C bond C. But we'll have a look at that on the next page. We've got compound E here. Now compound E has only got two environments. It's got quite a lot of hydrogens to only have two environments here. So we're thinking a lot of symmetry. And I would say the same thing about compound D as well. And I've also got something here just as a little tip from me. If you get a quartet and a triplet on your hydrogen NMR spectrum in the exam, that is very likely going to be a CH3, CH2 side by side. I'm not saying it's that every single time. This is just from my own experience. A CH3, CH2 is a quartet and a triplet. So watch out for this when you get it in the exam. You'll notice, however, the integration data, really irritating, hasn't been included, as that would make this answer even easier to get to. But considering they actually have given us quite a lot of functional group information and the molecular formula and the fact that they're all isomers earlier in the question, I think we can forgive them on this occasion. It's not going to hold us back. For compound F, we've actually got three environments. And we can see we've got this amazing multiplet, which is a septet over here, which is a multiplet of seven subpeaks alongside a singlet and a doublet. So this one's maybe a little trickier to decipher. Well, it would be if we didn't have this uh, multiplet here, this septet, because whenever we have a septet, we have an n value of six. So that's the number of neighboring hydrogens on the next carbon up. 
that means this is incredibly likely to be an environment that's bonded to two different CH3s. And so I would make sure I bear that in mind when I go through the next stage of the analysis. So here's my full answer. I'll take my time with this bit so that you can see how I've achieved each of these conclusions and how it links up the data. So first off, I'm actually going to give the chemical test data in one big chunk. I don't do this later down on the page, so I don't do all the spectrum separately and then determine the structures. I just want to do the chemical test bit at the start as one big section, since I'm going to explain what each chemical test is looking for very briefly, and then just summarize what it tells me about each of the different molecules. Don't forget the little reminder here, they are all isomers of C5H10O. Now the 2,4-DMP, like I said, tests for carbonyls. C uh, compound D has got no C double bond O, and E and F have them. We then use the additional test here of the acidified dichromate solution to conclude that D is a primary or secondary alcohol because it did have that colour change, and E and F must both be ketones because they don't react with the acidified dichromate 6 solution, but they did actually react with the 2,4-DNP. The bromine test is for the alkene group, the C double bond C, and none of them have got that, but I do need to point that out because I need to make sure that I've used all of the data and explained my reasoning of what this data is telling me. The next thing then is to look at the carbon-13 NMR spectrum of D, and I'm going to use this information to conclude the structure of D as well. I've got three carbon environments, and don't forget we have the molecular formula C5H10O. We also know that it's an alcohol. We can also then analyse the peaks a little further and talk about how the different parts of the molecule are causing for these peaks to be at different regions on the chemical shift scale. This all allows me, along with the information that one of these compounds was allocyclic, and we were told that right at the very start, to conclude that D was cyclopentanol. And this is an acceptable answer in the exam. We would have three different environments here, one for that, one for this, and one for those two carbons just there. And this alternative, which I've written in the pinky purple colour, is not one that I actually immediately went to. I think most people would go for cyclopentanol here, but it was an accepted answer, so I've included it alongside mine just here. How did I get to this? Well, considering only one of the structures was allowed to be allocyclic, and I knew that D had to be a primary or secondary alcohol, I started with the alcohol functional group, and then I thought, what happens if I just have a five carbon ring? What if I meet the demand of the allocyclic feature in full and just make it one big cyclic structure? And it turned out to be the right answer. And so what I'm advising you here is use all the information, but maybe don't overthink it. Try a structure in pencil and then see if it fits. But if it doesn't, rub out the sections that don't match and then build from those. Moving on to compound E, and we've got the two peaks here, which I've analysed to say are a quartet and a triplet. And don't forget, I've got that N information because the splitting pattern of the quartet comes from the N plus 1 rule, where N is the number of neighbouring hydrogens on the next carbon up. So I know that this environment, which is the one for this peak, is bonded to a CH3 because it has the quartet pattern. I also know that this environment is bonded to a CH2 because it had the triplet pattern. So I know I've got these two sections here. I also know that it's a ketone, don't forget, and I know that I've only got... Uh, five carbons to play with, but I'm only allowed two proton NMR peaks, so I know I've got some symmetry. So my advice here is to start with the functional group and then work your way around that. And actually, for this particular set of molecules, especially compound E here, if you start with the functional group, well, that's a massive proportion of the molecule. It's a ketone. That means I've got to have the carbon and then a carbon either side and the C double bond O in the middle. That's a massive proportion of the molecule. There's only two carbons and six hydrogens left on this. And so I can really easily start with the functional group and work outwards from that if we consider that as a tactic moving forward. For compound F, the clipping together for this one might seem more difficult, but once again, once you remember it's a ketone, this gets a lot easier. Here I've done my four, sorry, my three different analyses just here of the different peaks. I've got a septet, a singlet, and a doublet. I talk about the N value for each of these. This is out of habit. I always lay out my answers like this. We don't have that integration data to find out the number of hydrogens within an environment, but we don't need it. 
We know we've got a CH just here because the position of the peak on the chemical shift scale tells me it's next to a C double bond O. And also the splitting pattern of a septet tells me it's bonded to two equivalent CH3s. And so this CH here bonded to these different sections is an incredibly enormous part of the molecule once again and could probably help us to determine the whole thing if we just started from that especially when we consider that the only other thing we would need to figure out is where the fifth carbon is. And it's on the other side over here on this carbon, which we find pretty quickly with our next peak. It's in the right position on the chemical shift scale. It's a CH3 all by itself, accounting for the remaining part of the molecular formulae. And of course, it's next to that C double bond O, our ketone group. This final peak down here, the doublet, the CH3, it's these two. These two are equivalent environments and so only give one peak and that's why I've just got one CH3 here labelled up for this one. When I clip the molecule together, again, start from this section up here. Look how much of that molecule that covers. There was only this bit at the end that it didn't include. Start with your functional group or start from a very informed piece of the molecule from your NMR analysis. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it has made a difference, but before you go, I do need some help. Please leave this video a like before you go because it really does help support my channel and let YouTube know I still exist. There's loads of good stuff around the screen now and links to my other video content in the description down below, so make sure you check that out before you head off. Until next time though, everybody, happy revising.